If you have a Synology NAS that doesn't need to be powered on 24-7, you'll want to consider configuring a power schedule and set up Wake on LAN, which is the topic we'll be covering in this video. To set up a power schedule, navigate to your control panel, select Hardware and Power, and switch to the Power Schedule section. Here you have the option to create both a startup and shutdown schedule. For example, if you want to have your NAS powered on during weekday business hours, you could select weekdays for date, then choose let's say 7 a.m. to start up the NAS. Then create another weekday schedule to shut down the NAS at say 6 p.m. You can then click on summary to review the schedule to make sure it is set up exactly as intended. While a power schedule is customizable, allowing you to set a schedule for your Synology NAS to be on or off, it doesn't provide the flexibility to turn your NAS on or off as needed. For example, in my case, the NAS that I'm using for this video is used mainly for YouTube content without a set schedule on when it needs to be part on or off. I'm also not always physically in the same location as the NAS, so I can't push the power button to turn it on. In these situations, you can take advantage of Wake on LAN, which is a networking standard that allows you to turn on a computer or Synology NAS, in this example, by sending a specially designed frame called a magic packet. To enable Wake on LAN on your Synology NAS, head to the general section of the hardware and power control panel and enable wall on the LAN port or ports that you want to be enabled with this feature and apply the changes. Then from the Info Center control panel under the Network section, note the MAC address of the active LAN port you enabled Wake on LAN on. You'll also need to identify the network interface associated with the MAC address by SSHing into the NAS. So from here, select the Terminal and SNMP control panel, enable the SSH service, and click Apply and OK on this warning pop-up window. Then SSH into the NAS and issue the ifconfig command. Here you'll need to look for the active LAN port and make note of its network interface. You'll also see the MAC address that was identified earlier here as well. Now I'll shut down this Synology NAS and turn it back on using Wake on LAN. Note that the magic packet used to turn on a system via Wake on LAN is sent as a broadcast, and because of this, it needs to be sent from a device on the same local network as the system you want to turn on. One option is to SSH into another Synology NAS on the same network and send the magic packet from there. Here I'll ping the NAS that I just turned off in this terminal window, and in this one I'll SSH into my other Synology NAS that is always on and I'll issue the command sudo synonet dash dash wake, followed by the MAC address of the Synology NAS that is currently turned off, and change the segment separator from dashes to colons. I'll end the command with the network interface that was identified earlier, and hit enter to execute the command. After waiting for about a minute, the Synology NAS that I issued the wake on LAN request to starts pinging and I'm able to bring up its web interface and log back in. I'll shut down the NAS once again, and as an alternative option, I'll use my Synology router to send the magic packet to turn on the NAS. If you don't have a Synology router, you may want to check if the router you have supports remotely starting up a device using Wake on LAN. For a Synology router specifically, you'll need to launch Network Tools from the main menu, select Wake on LAN, and either select the Synology NAS from the list of devices that the router identified on the network, or enter in the MAC address of the NAS. Now you can either click on the Wake on LAN button or click Add to add the NAS to the frequently used device list and click the lightning bolt icon and click Yes on this pop-up window to send the magic packet to wake up the NAS. The magic packet can be sent from any device on the LAN, so if you have a Windows, Mac OS, or Linux system, you should be able to find a utility to use.
To access your local LAN remotely, you can set up a VPN or use a tool like Tailscale, which is what I'm using in this video. And if you'd like to do the same, check out some of my Tailscale videos listed here on screen. Lastly, if you'd like to support my work or hire me for a project, check out the links on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.